previously on the Traveling Together Journal. We saw lots of crocodiles, got some fun surfing in at Playa Hermosa, and explored some undeveloped coastline for waves with our new travel friends, before continuing south down the Pacific coast of Costa Rica to the popular tourist town of Capos. We were here in Capos to go whitewater rafting and to do a mangrove kayak tour. With Costa Rica being one of the most expensive countries of our trip, these tours would have been beyond our small budget. But luckily for us, a local tour company liked our videos and offered to let us tag along for free. So we stashed our pal Jagger into the cheapest air-conditioned hotel room we could find and hopped on the shuttle bus to the mangrove forest. During the 20-minute drive, our friendly English-speaking guide informed us about the palm oil plantations that we were passing through where they grow and harvest the oil palm fruit and transport it to the processing plant by ox cart to extract the oil for use in foods and cosmetics. Eventually, the oil palms gave way to mangrove trees and we were quickly in the water, floating down a relatively wide channel. Though multiple rivers feed into this large mangrove system, our guide explained that the current we were filling was actually caused by the tide, which floods this area during high tide as we see now, but will recede several feet over the next six hours and leave some areas unpassable by boat. We were glad to have our experienced guides leading the way as we wound our way down ever narrower channels, for we would have been quickly lost without them. In addition, they pointed out different species of trees and explained how each species evolved to cope with the salty floodwaters and thrive in this challenging environment. We also came across crabs, snails, and even bats living amongst the mangrove trees. Look at the little bats! Oh, they're so cool! But the most surprising animals were the monkeys. These white-faced capuchin monkeys move nimbly through the branches and roots of the mangrove trees, hunting for fruits, insects, crabs, and other foods to eat. They kept a short distance but didn't seem too bothered by our presence. We observed them briefly before they moved off in a direction that we could not follow, and we suddenly found ourselves back out in the main channel, paddling against the slow current to make our way back to the put-in. From here, we're gonna go to the most important part of the tour, okay? We're gonna go to have lunch. On our way back to Capos, we stopped at the tour headquarters for our included lunch. They served us a traditional Costa Rican meal called casado, which consists of rice, beans, vegetables, and typically some kind of meat. We generally found the food in Costa Rica to be lighter and contain more fresh vegetables than other parts of Central America, and this casado was no exception. I got the chicken, and Amy got the vegetarian. Both were tasty, and left us feeling satisfied. Well, we're back from our tour. That was like a lot of fun, Matt. Did you have fun? Yeah, that was really cool. Oh, it was really we cool. got to learn some stuff about mangroves, which are pretty neat. Oh, they're really, really cool. It's a very cool ecosystem. So this is our room. Uh, they don't have a matrimonial bed, which would just be one bed, which is funny because there's one, and there's one there. I feel like we are not getting the room that's in the pictures. That's okay. Um, so yes, this is our beautiful room. I do want to give them five stars on towel folding. Look at that. That's a fish. That's so cute. Look, it even has a little eye. Matt doesn't get an eye. I just decided that's that's his towel. I get the one with the flower in the eye. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see. We got our own bathroom. That's always nice. Looks clean. Oh, but we do have one of those like sketchy hot water things going on where you do not want to touch it when it's on. I one time was showering in one of these and I took my razor and I always try to get it a little closer to get the hair out of the razor, and I got electrocuted while I was showering. Huge upside though, they got parking, and it's right out this door here, so we're gonna get nice and close. As you guys know, it's been raining a ton here in Costa Rica, and so even though we're at a hotel, we have a refrigerator we can use. Uh, we need to get our batteries charged up for when 
we do get back on the road. So here in the parking lot of the hotel with our panels out. And then we've got like a little kitchen area. Um, and it's nice and close. This looks totally sufficient. The room's a little weird, but everything else is good. All right, we're all packed up, ready to go for our white water rafting trip. Pretty excited. Amy's excited. <laughs> it's my second time ever going white water rafting. So I'm still a little bit nervous, but excited. The river I think is rated at the same as the one other time I did it, which was in Mexico during this trip. So shouldn't be too scary, but still a little bit nervous. Once again, Tucanis Tours provided us with transportation and our friendly guides informed us about the area as we bumped our way along the dirt road to Rio Segre. Costa Rica has made many conservation efforts over the years, and while they still actively farm the areas that have already been cleared out, many steps have been taken to prevent further deforestation. According to our guide, landowners must now ask permission and obtain permits before removing even a single native tree. These efforts have made an obvious difference in conserving the natural habitats in Costa Rica when compared to the other countries that we've been traveling through. Upon arriving at our destination, it was clear that this was the put-in spot for all of the tour groups in the area and that we would not be alone on the river. Our guides finished preparing our rafts, while our driver prepared some fresh fruit for us to snack on. <laughs> we got geared up with helmets, life jackets, and paddles, and received safety instructions from our guides before it was our turn to get in the river. We paddled off the bank and into some little rapids that got our crack team of paddlers going right away. There are other longer rafting trips available that start further up the river and encounter class 4 rapids. We were only doing the lower section of Savegre, but would still encounter class 2 and 3 rapids, along with some nice smooth water areas that would allow us to take a breather and enjoy the scenery. About halfway through the trip, we pulled off to the side of the river along with the other rafts and followed a short path up a tributary to this beautiful waterfall swimming hole. It was a beautiful spot and the short walk was just what I needed to get the blood flowing in my legs again after sitting on the raft for so long. We continued down the rapids and enjoyed the new views around every bend. After two and a half hours on the river, we had descended nearly nine miles down Rio Segre and reached our haul-out spot where we climbed out of the boat and into the waiting van to transport us back to Capos. All right, we're back from our rafting trip. Did you have fun, Matt? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, super fun. Like Everybody, oh, it was really, it was a fun river. It was a fun rafting trip. Um, and now we're about to go in and release the hound. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi. Did you miss us? Did you miss us? Yeah. Yeah, did you miss us? Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, we'll go outside. All right, freedom. We are back on the road. We just left Manuel Antonio area and we are headed towards Dominical. We've got a couple of our overlanding buddies that we've made along the road camping in a parking lot that is close to Los Cocos, which is where our friends Ingrid and Maddie are staying. They um, needed to demold their van. We're not the only ones feeling a little waterlogged from Costa Rica. So we're gonna go meet up with them. Amy just freaked me out pretty good. We were driving down the highway and she's like, there's a sloth! She started like yelling. And uh, so yeah, I pulled over and she just like went running across the highway to go try to 
get some footage of the sloth, so hopefully you're watching footage of sloth right now. I just saw a sloth. There's a school bus pulled over on the side of the road, and I was like, what are they looking at? And it's a freaking sloth. That was like a really active sloth. Everybody was saying, they're like, oh, I've never seen a move like that before. That was really cool. We like went to one brand, went to another brand, and then we went down the trunk, and then he hid, and then you're like, well, that's why you never see sloths. Because that guy was super hidden. <laughs> Anyways, yay! Bucket list animal complete! Next time on the Traveling Together Journal, we meet back up with a bunch of our Pan American overlanding friends and share a few waves in Playa Dominical.